Ah, okay. EKGs or ECGs, same thing. The intrinsic cardiac conduction system creates an electrical uh, flow that can be measured with pads. We'll do this later. Um, so these things in yellow here, SA node, pacemaker, as you know, AV node, bundle of his, his, uh, bundle branches, and then the Purkinje fibers that take it all the way through the ventricles. So let's look at how these uh, EKGs work. Uh, you'll notice from the SA node to the AV node, um, it spreads through the atria, uh, and then there's a brief lag time at the AV node, uh, whereby filling is uh, allowed to finalize or to finish into the ventricles of uh, blood, and then it spreads down through the ventricles, uh, so the ventricles contract. Now, uh, the function is basically so that the atria and ventricles contract at the appropriate times, and sort of logically speaking, as I, as I just mentioned, this is just going through that process again for you. And it's going to create this, uh, um, these deflection waves, as it's called, okay? Now, the pacemaker, the sinoatrial node, is responsible for atrial depolarization, okay? So you see the slight increase, this slight depolarization here, which we call the P wave. And that's basically, that's going from the SA node to the AV node, okay? Uh, so the P wave is atrial depolarization. Next, we have the QRS complex. The QRS complex that you see here, labeled QRS, uh, is reflective of ventricular depolarization. Uh, as the wave spreads through the AV node and down through the Purkinje fibers and so on, we see the QRS complex, okay? Lastly, we have atrial, uh, sorry, not lastly, uh, hidden behind ventricular depolarization, behind the QRS, is atrial repolarization. And you can't see the atrial repolarization wave uh, because the ventricular depolarization is masking it, it's overriding it. Uh, and then lastly, we have ventricular repolarization there, which is the T wave. Uh, there you go. Uh, so we call this the distance from, the P, from P to Q, that's the PQ interval, it's usually about 0.2 seconds. Okay. The QT interval is usually about 0.6 seconds, and then uh, we reset the system, there's the brief pause, and then the, the thing goes again. So in about in, in one minute, at about 0.8 seconds per cycle, per PQRST, uh, that's a resting heart rate of about 75 beats per minute. So this can fluctuate and change based on the, disc, the PQ interval, uh, the, Q, the QT interval, and so on. So, uh, if you have a first degree heart block, what's called a first degree heart block, uh, then the PQ interval is longer than 0.2 seconds. It might look something like, oh, it's not showing us. Um, the PQ interval will be elongated, okay? That would be a first degree heart block. And that's basically the conduction system is, is blocked between the SA node and the AV node. Um, there's some blockage that's occurring. It's not transmitting properly. We can also have an enlarged QRS that you can see there. Uh, manipulated through Photoshop, of course. And this is ref reflective of hypertrophy of the ventricles. When the ventricles get overly enlarged, you have a larger or bigger QRS. You can also have a prolonged QT interval. It elongates or gets bigger. And in this case, um, there's a variety of different things that it could be, but usually associated with uh, ventricular arrhythmias, repolarization abnormalities uh, associated with ventricular arrhythmias. So, uh, Disorders with timing, so there's a longer lag, and then it beats really quickly, and then a longer lag, that kind of stuff. That's more reflective of the QT interval. Uh, an elevated T wave that you can see there is typically reflective of hyperkalemia, meaning excess cal um, potassium in your bloodstream. And then if your T wave is too flat, then it's the opposite, hypokalemia, or it's also reflective of ischemia. The T wave is ventricular repolarization. Uh, we have a hard time repolarizing. Um, because of lack of blood flow, ischemia being lack of blood flow, right? So this is reflective of these different things. Here's a normal EKG, the PQRST, okay? That you see there, PQRS and T. And it beats over and over, boop, 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 right? Uh, you notice something's missing here. This is a second degree heart block. You don't have a QRS for each P wave. So you have a P wave here, there's no QRS. You have a P wave here, there's no QRS. You're not getting ventricular depolarization the heart has an issue. Second degree meaning from the AV node down through all the way to the Purkinje fibers, there's some blockage there and it's not transmitting properly. Here you see another problem, a third degree heart block where there's no P waves. Okay, remember P wave is uh, atrial depolarization um, 
And so there is no atrial depolarization. You still have ventricular depolarization, but it's not spreading through the atria for whatever reason. We call this a third degree heart block. And all these combine together to form the cardiac cycle, all in one single beat combined with systole and diastole of the ventricles. You see the PQRST and how it's reflective of various pressures. QRST is going to, is going to, or QRS is going to trigger the highest pressure in the heart. Um, okay, ventricular systole is shown here. Ventricular diastole is shown here. And there you have the aorta. That line refers to the aorta. And this is showing you uh, the pressure that's being done. Systolic pressure is highest up at the peak there. That's the highest pressure in the heart, right? And then diastolic pressure is the lowest pressure here at 80. Um, as measured in the aorta right down there, it's maybe in this case, it's a little lower than 80, but that's okay. That's the diastolic blood pressure. Okay. And again, this is the uh, normal scenario. Okay. And we're done for today. That's the end of lecture. A nice short Eenie Peenie one.